Welcome to a behind the scenes look into a very typical work week for me as a mom, as a business owner who works from home, and as a woman in the new baby and toddler phase of parenting. When I asked you guys what you want more of on the podcast, these episodes are always requested and I've done this style three other times since having my show which is so fun because back then on the first time I ever did this, it was one of the first 10 episodes of the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. Uh, Life was so different then, right? I was newer in my business. I was not a mom yet. I probably would have fun re-listening that episode and seeing how much things have changed over time. But anyway, I'm going to tell you what life is like right now as I'm coming back from maternity leave, working really just two days a week and then getting some hours in here and there. Um, So I hope you enjoy this behind the scenes look at my work and life. And um, I feel quite vulnerable sharing this. I feel like I always feel vulnerable on these episodes. I definitely, you know, leave some things out, forget some things, maybe don't explain things as well as I could at times, but I hope this is interesting to you and helpful to you in your life and in your work in some ways. And I know for me, as someone who also listens to podcasts, I always love these kinds of episodes, right? I love when people pull back the curtain and just really share like, the raw and real of like what it looks like to run their business. And so that is truly what this is uh, on this episode. So you'll hear me check in every morning to say what I have planned for that day and then check in in the evening as well, or sometimes the next morning to tell you how the day went and all the links and resources I mentioned when there's, which there's quite a few, I talk about some parenting things, some business things I use. Um, I even tell you about a muffin recipe at one point. So anyway, all of that is linked in the blog post for this episode and I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful week as you listen to my week. Here's the episode. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, an online educator for entrepreneurs, website designer, wife, boy mom, and your host for the Breakthrough Brand Podcast the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want to dive deep into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a sustainable business that fits your unique lifestyle while standing out in a crowd, then you are in the right place. I created a multiple six figure a year business in my early twenties. And now in my thirties, I'm still running that successful multiple six figure a year business on just part-time hours now as a working mom. I'm here to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe that the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like friends chatting business over coffee and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, website design, personal branding, mindset, time management as a busy parent, scalable and passive income, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. All right, so right now it is Monday morning, 9, 11 a.m., and I am starting the workday. And I had a rough night of sleep, which is so typical with the age kids I have, I guess you would say, but Ethan is about to be five months old, but he was waking up a few times throughout the night. And then I woke up to Colin wanting mama, which is something he's been doing a lot lately of like, just like asking me to come in his room really early in the morning. So was up with Ethan. Ethan woke up at 620. Colin woke up before that, but I did not go in his room for a while. And so my morning routine looked like absolutely no routine. There was no like nice devotional time up before the kids having coffee, exercising, none of that. Um, I got up when Colin woke up at 7 a.m. after Adam had already been awake with Ethan for like an hour, I guess. And so from then on, we had a family breakfast together, which is something we do most days and I really, really love. And then Adam and I played with Colin while we all kind of like got ready for the day in little bits, like, you know, changing Ethan's diaper, helping Colin get dressed and then me getting dressed, Adam getting dressed, et cetera. And then Adam left and took Colin to preschool. Colin goes to preschool three days a week, as you'll hear in this episode, but he took him to school around 8 a.m. And then Adam usually on Mondays goes straight to work from there. So he drops Colin off. He usually has 9 a.m. counseling session in Nashville. He's a mental health counselor and works in Nashville. So he normally like has to go immediately, but today he has later sessions starting. So he actually came back home helped me with Ethan for a little bit so I could go ahead and get ready for the day so that I could start work at nine like I have. And so he put Ethan down for his nap around 8.30 
And at that time, I went and finished getting ready for the day and then prepped things for our nanny to get here, like kind of straightened the kitchen a little bit, got off the stuff she would need for the day. And then I cleaned my office from the weekend because my office is right off of our playroom. And Colin has turned into like an extension of his playroom. So I actually still have a lot of playroom toys in here right now, but I had to take off like his cozy coop car, his um, kitchen, a bunch of his like his like lawnmower toys and things like that. I moved them all out of my office, moved my chair back to the proper spot, kind of cleared off my desk and got things ready for starting the day. And I kind of forgot to mention this, but our nanny got here at 9 a.m. So when she got here, Ethan was already asleep for his nap. And I handed her over the baby monitor and kind of explained, you know, how the morning's been, how, how much food he's had to eat, all of that sort of thing. And now she's taking over and I came back up to my office and have started things. So first thing I always do on days that I'm working is start with a huge brain dump of everything I need to do today, like both personal work, meetings, even little agenda items like text this person back about scheduling something or get to this email, things like that. And I'm using my full focus planner, which is a planner I've loved using for years now, but I I don't use it constantly, right? And right now I'm only really having two full work days a week. So it kind of can feel silly using it because I'm like, okay, that I'm only using like Monday and Wednesday every week, right? And so it feels a little bit like a waste. So I'm actually writing this in Tuesday spot from last week because I did not use it. So I'm I'm using like the calendar structure, but then like also not using it completely correctly right now. I mean, if you're curious about this type of planner, go to elizabethmccravey.com slash full dash focus and you can get info on it and that's an affiliate link that will also give you a discount as well and I'll link to that in the show notes but I'm using that planner and so I just brained up like all the things I've got to do today and it's actually 28 things on my list in this planner which I know sounds like a lot but it's because I break down a lot of those things more granularly and then I also have written down some things on here that are not for work like working out or you know texting my grandparents about visiting like some things like that are on here uh, and then there's some things that are going to be really quick to get done whereas there's some other like larger agenda item things that are going to take a lot longer to get done so I wrote all this out and I, I haven't really fully mapped out like what order I'm doing things in but generally I know like I was starting Starting with this. Next, I'm going to record a podcast episode. Next, I'm going to work on a sponsorship thing. Um, but let me tell you what's on the list. Like, why don't I go ahead and tell you? So, the first thing that I kind of just in the order I wrote them down was I have a podcast sponsorship and partnership starting soon. And I'm so excited about it. You guys will start seeing me share about them and the ads on this podcast. It actually might even be an ad on this episode. I'm not sure when exactly I'll air this, but that partnership is one I'm super, super excited about. And the company messaged me on Friday that they are all in and ready and like, go ahead and send the contract. So I need to write up the contract using a contract template I use for my podcast um, partnerships and sponsorships. And then I need to make the invoice and send them both the contract and invoice. And also I need to work out like, hey, when is my proposed start date? Because we didn't get that specific on like when the first ads would be put in episodes and when like the first social media content would be made and all of that. So I need to work that out as well. And that's going to take a bit of time, right? So that's my first big item I wrote down. And I used Dubsado for all that, by the way. Um, You guys have heard me talk about Dubsado in this podcast many times, but if you go to elizabethmccravey.com slash Dubsado, I'll put that in the show notes as well. You can get 30% off your Dubsado subscription and you can use it for so many things, right? So like I'm saying, I use it right now a lot for podcast sponsorships. So I will be sending them the contract and the invoice and I already sent them the proposal all through Dubsado. And so that's how they'll be paying me. That's how the contract was made. It's, it's all so easy and quick once you get it set up. So anyway, love Dubsado. been using them for like a thousand years now. So that's one thing, right? And then another thing on my list is a Slack check-in with my team, which is something we do Monday morning. I have an automation that goes up in our Slack channel, um, the check-ins channel that asks basically like, what's going on this week for you? What are you working on? Um, If you want to see the exact questions I ask and how to set it up in your own Slack channel, I will link to that freebie in the show notes for check-ins with your your team on Slack. So I need to do that. Again, that's something that I wrote on my to-do list, but will only take me like two minutes. But y'all, I I love having the big items, like what I was just saying about that podcast partnership of like, that's going to take me a lot of time. But then I also love being able to put something on there, like check-in on Slack, which is like a three-minute thing. And that I know I'll just be able to, the you know, mark off really quickly. Next thing, which is actually what I'm going to do as soon as I'm done recording this, is record a solo episode for the podcast that actually airs tomorrow at the time I'm 
recording this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so behind. Normally I'm at least a week out on podcast episodes, like seven days um, before it's going to air. And ideally I like to be even more like two weeks out because I want to be respectful of my podcast team, which is two contractors I work with who help with the podcast. And I want to get stuff to them fast enough. So I feel really bad that I'm this behind on it. Um, Just, you know, it, uh, getting back on how I've been working just two days a week right now, it just didn't happen. Unfortunately, last week I was doing a lot of podcast interviews with people. And so those all got recorded, but this is the part three in the maternity leave series I was doing where I'm going to share about like what work life is looking like coming back from leave. And I just never got to recording it. So they both know that like I told them I will get it to them by 11 a.m. Central Standard Time today. And I told them over the weekend, like, hey, I'm sorry, I thought I was going to be able to record over the weekend, but I didn't get to them either. So they know it's coming and both so that they've set aside time today to be able to work on it. So that's good, but I'm going to do that ASAP when I'm done recording this. And then another, like a bigger agenda item is watching a loom from a team member for a template project we're working on that I'm really excited that progress has been made on. So I will watch that, do edits, get back to her probably with a loom video back, which if you don't know what loom is, it's basically like in lieu of a meeting, I would say. It's a way for you to record, usually sharing your screen with your face in the corner. Uh, You record a video, you send it through cloud, just through a link. So it's not like you record a video, you download to your computer, and then you email them the like MP4 file. It's like all just done virtually through a link. Um, But it's a great way to like meet without meeting. So like you record the video, you send it to them. It says all the things you need to say. They can comment back on the video and then you can send them a video back. So I do a lot of that instead of meeting with people all the time. So she sent me that last week and now I've got to get back to her on that. And that's something that I think will probably take an hour or two. Like it'll be a lot of time because it's going to be me really diving into some template design things for some templates I've been working on that I'm so excited about. Hopefully we'll release in like a month or two. But that's something I'm excited to like look at what's happened on there and get back to her. Next up is recording two reels about the new podcast art giveaway I'm hosting over on Instagram that will be over by the time this airs, but I just got updated podcast art, which I love. And I decided to host a giveaway to go with that. And so I have one reel I already made that I posted at the time that I started the giveaway to like promote it. But now, you know, we're a few days into the giveaway and I'm like, I want to make another piece of content, actually two different pieces to continue promoting the giveaway. And they're both two different types of content. So I already, again, I have the vision for it. I wrote it down in my planner, but one is going to be me talking face to camera about the giveaway. And I'll probably like put on it some like images of the podcast art and things like that. And then the other piece, I might end up making it a carousel that I like designing Canva, or it might be a reel. I haven't decided yet, but it's going to be my favorite things about the new podcast art. And I'm going to show some things that were done to make it. Like one thing is that the background on the image of me on it was darkened. Um, You know, putting the logo slightly behind my head. Those are some things I'm going to talk about. Again, I haven't decided what format makes the most sense yet. So that might be a carousel. That might be a reel, but I'm going to make that. And again, y'all know reels take way too long to make. So that's probably like at least an hour of my day, unfortunately. But that's something that's got to get done. And I'll try to do that as quickly as I can. And then one of those things I'm going to literally post today as well. I also need to pay team members in Gusto, which is the payroll software I use because it is at the end of the month. If you want a link and discount for Gusto, elizabethmccravey.com slash Gusto will get you that, but I need to pay those contractors. And I also, I have myself on automatic payroll, so that just happens, but I have to go in and manually pay my contractors. Again, that's something that'll take like five minutes, but it's on my to-do list. And then last major work thing today is I have a meeting with Stephanie King, who you guys heard on the podcast a few weeks ago. She's absolutely incredible. Her company's My Essential Birth. Her podcast is Pregnancy and Birth Made Easy. But we are having a just 30-minute meeting about her birth course where she wanted to ask me some questions about including more content around C-sections in it. And I'm I'm a customer of her birth course. I'm a fan of her podcast. She's a fan of my podcast. And um, you know, she listened to my birth story about Ethan's um, story where I had an unexpected C-section. And she thought, you know, hey, I want to include more content around C-sections in her birth course. And so she has some questions for me about that, which I don't even really know what the questions are yet. So I'm excited to talk to her about that. And maybe I'll update y'all on kind of a little bit of our discussion once um, I have that meeting today. So then and the last thing really is record this for you again at the end of the workday to recap it. And that's going to end up being what I do for work today. And then I'm also really hoping to work out, which I can feel like I don't have time for today, right? I can feel like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to get to the gym when I have childcare today? You know, Colin's at preschool. Our nanny's here with Ethan. 
but I really want to make going to the gym happen. I did not get to the gym except for once last week because I was feeling sick and the week felt really busy. So I want to make sure I'm prioritizing that and not just working when I have childcare. And then on my to-do list too, I have a few different people to text back um, and email back. And those will be little quick things, but I put them on my to-do list so I don't forget. So you can see a lot of what's on my list is faster to do, but then there are some bigger things that are going to take up a lot of time, like recording a podcast, the template project, writing up a contract for the partnership, all that kind of stuff. I obviously take breaks um, to also go be with Ethan, to pump, because I'm still nursing and breastfeeding, and then also to hopefully do a bit of a quiet time. Um, as you heard, I did not really have much morning routine. That's been very typical for me lately. Like usually I'm getting up with my kids these days, but I really love to still be able to spend time in God's word, spend time journaling, spend time praying. So that's something that I have to fit into the workday, um, which I don't fit into every workday, but that's something too I have on this to-do list I forgot to mention is like hopefully getting that in at some point. So that's it. That is the day. And I'll check in with you guys at the end of the workday, tell you how it went. Hello guys. Okay. Now it is 3 40 PM and I have been working away all day. I feel like it was just a few minutes ago that I actually sat down to record this this morning, but so much has happened since then. Uh, I actually got through a lot of my to-do list in the last six and a half hours. I basically did the things I said I was going to work on, but I did not get through everything, but I did hit the top things, which I feel really good about. So let me kind of tell you what the day looked like. So I spent an hour and a half recording podcast stuff. So that includes this episode I'm recording right now. And obviously it'll actually be more than an hour and a half because it's whatever time I've been doing this right now, but it includes this episode in the other one I recorded that I was saying airs tomorrow. And that is 278. That episode is 278 in the podcast. If you want to go back and listen to it. So that's when I just recorded. And then I spent 40 minutes today on the podcast sponsor contract creation invoice, all that, um, sending that to the podcast sponsor. And then there was about another 10 minutes or so of like miscellaneous podcast things. So all in all, I spent close to two and a half hours on the podcast today. Plus again, whatever I do recording right now. So a lot of time podcasting is work, right? Um, that was the focus of today. I also did like some scheduling type stuff for the podcast for some upcoming interviews, things like that. Uh, you heard me say that this morning that one of my goals was to do two different Instagram content pieces to promote my giveaway. So one was going to be to post today. One was going to be to post tomorrow or Wednesday this week. And I only ended up making one of them that I was aiming to make. And that took me 40 minutes. Um, again, I, I tracked all my time. So that's how I know all of this, which I can talk about time tracking in a minute, but I tracked all my time, but that took me 40 minutes, including post posting about it on Instagram and promoting it. And that felt good. I was kind of shocked. It only took me 40 minutes because I had to make the entire carousel about it in Canva, writing the content for it. I already had the concept figured out. And the concept was like some of my favorite design decisions in the podcast art rebrand. So I was talking about things like darkening the photo, the logo being kind of behind my head and some things like that. So I already knew the concept, but I had to write it. I had to design it, write the caption and post it. And I did all that in 40 minutes. So I feel like that is a good thing considering all the time, you know, stuff can take when it comes to Instagram content. Uh, then I spent about 45 minutes working on the new template design stuff, but I actually got really hung up on some decisions I need to make for it. So I did not get as far as that as I wanted to. I was hoping to get to where it's like, okay, my team members ready to do the next thing because we're like ready to move forward. But instead I got really hung up. Um, so I'm actually taking a pause on that. And I told her like, Hey, we got to like pause on this for a bit and reconsider some stuff before we keep going. Basically what I'm trying to decide on is these are add-on templates, right? And so in an add-on template, it's like you could go with a really neutral color palette of like kind of blacks, whites, and grays, maybe a little bit of color, but just mainly sticking to those. Or you could go more branded, more colorful, using more colorful and branded photos even as the filler images. And I'm trying to figure out like, wait, what direction do we want to go? Do we want to go more colorful or do we want to go more just neutral? And then also for one of the add-ons, um, I guess I could tell you guys what it is. It's a tools and resource page add-on. Um, that's one of the ones that I was working on today. I'm so excited about it. It's looking amazing. But that's another consideration of like, there's all these different ways we can lay it out. So it's like, do we do just one page where it's like, here are all these options? Or do I make it one template, but you're getting three different pages that have all these different options that you can kind of mix and match to build your own amazing tools and resource page. So that's the stuff I'm trying to figure out. And I was, again, I was hoping like, all right, I'm going to figure it out right now. But instead I spent the 45 minutes doing some other like minor changes to it and then playing around with the color palette, playing around with some font decisions, playing around with some images and also like, okay, what else should be added? What should be taken out? 
and things like that on that particular template. And then one other add-on. Well, right now, y'all, I'm working on five different new add-on templates. So like, that's really exciting, but you know, it takes time on these. And so it'll be a process. I'm not sure when those will launch, but that's how much time that took. And then I spent 40 minutes in my meeting with Stephanie King about her birth course. And that went really awesome. I got to talk to her about my C-section with Ethan and kind of helping her think about, okay, how do we talk about C-sections in her birth course? And actually next week, I will be interviewed on her podcast to share Ethan's birth story. So this was kind of a meeting like before that, just to like help her with her course content and let her pick my brain about it since I was a student in her course. And then next week she's interviewing me to be on her podcast. So that'll be fun. Uh, I paid my team. Most of them, I actually have one person I haven't paid yet because I'm waiting to hear back from her on something, but I did that. I did my Slack check-in. Uh, I texted all the people back I needed to text and texted my grandparents about planning the visit and all of that kind of random stuff. Uh, and so all that like some random miscellaneous stuff. And, um, today's work, um, let's see the actual time I spent working is going to end up at right over five hours. Um, just slightly over when you include this time I'm spending right now. Um, so that's how much time it's been, even though it's been like six and a half hours since I basically had started the workday. So again, I haven't worked every single second. And some of that time went to me taking a longer lunch break today. I actually took a longer lunch. I read a book and did some journaling and prayer time while I ate lunch. And after I'd finished eating, obviously, because it didn't take that long to eat. Uh, and so I did that. And then I also went downstairs with Ethan and our nanny a few different times. And so that took up some of the time as well. So yeah, and also I didn't reply to any emails today. That was something I was kind of hoping to do since it's Monday. But all I did was respond to one about podcast interview scheduling. And then I emailed with show its team some questions I had about the Spark conference I'm speaking at. So like all the other emails I'm supposed to get back to are just sitting there, which is okay, you guys. I feel like that's such a myth we're taught as business owners that you have to respond to every email super, super quick and always be at inbox zero. And I do think that like time sensitive emails where people need something from you should respond to sooner, but also a lot of the emails can wait longer. And I got some really valuable work done today that moves the business forward, right? Like I'm moving projects forward, like episodes for this podcast, um, sponsorships, uh, new template designs, like all things that move the needle in my business. And some of the emails, while they are important, they don't necessarily move the needle as much. So I think it's okay um, that I didn't get to all of them. So now as I approach 4 p.m., it is as I'm recording 347. I'm about to finish this up real quick. And then I'm going to go to the gym, which is one of the things if you heard me talk about what I was going to do today, I have not done that yet. Um, I was starting to feel like, Oh, do I even want to go? It's so easy to talk yourself out of these things. Right. But I am trying to get back into more of a routine of exercising in like postpartum, you know, Ethan is about to be five months old. And I worked out all of pregnancy and prior to that too. Um, but it can be hard sometimes to get back into a rhythm when so much in your life has changed. So I've been trying to go to the gym like two days a week, ideally, and then doing some walking and other things like with my kids on other days, but I want to try to do that. So I'm planning, it's going to be tight for me, actually. I got to go change clothes really quick and get moving, but I'm planning to go work out and then go pick up Colin from school and get him by 4.30, which again, you can hear that's very tight timeline. Um, that's why I need to like get, stop recording this and get rolling. But I'm going to do that. And it might be a short workout. It might only be like 20 minutes, but I think 20 minutes is better than nothing. Um, shout out to anyone who's listening to this at the gym right now, working out, walking, exercising, go you. Uh, such a great time to listen to podcasts while you're doing that. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing next. And then I will get Colin and come home and our nanny will leave. It's nice. Some days she's able to stay long enough for me to go get Colin without taking Ethan. So Ethan can actually be like taking his final nap of the day while I'm going to pick up Colin. And then I'm going to be making a chicken vegetable gnocchi dish for dinner, which I actually had the idea as I was writing that that's a recipe I should totally consider blogging. I think you guys would enjoy it. I think anyone would enjoy it. It's actually a recipe that my mother-in-law made up and it's so simple. It's just, it's really three ingredients. Um, you're using a special kind of frozen gnocchi from Trader Joe's and then frozen um, peppers from Trader Joe's and then chicken. And it's like just one dish on the skillet. You don't even put anything in the oven ever. Um, and it's been one of my go-to dishes um, coming back from like having had freezer meals, having had a meal train um, in this postpartum season because it's a meal that I can make while taking care of both kids at the same time. And it's delicious and like freshly cooked and also does 
really good as leftovers. So anyway, I'll consider blogging that because it would be a fun little recipe to put on my blog. Uh, but I'll be making that tonight. And Adam will probably be home from work around 545. And then we're going to go into, you know, our like evening routine with the kids of like, you know, playing more in the playroom and some things like that. And then we'll do bedtimes for both of them. And then Adam and I will probably sit up and either watch a TV show or read or like sit and have drinks on our front porch and have a little at home date night. So that is today. And I'll be back tomorrow morning to tell you what Tuesday holds. Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work-provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost-sharing ministry and is a faith-based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM, and if you know me and Adam, you know we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contribution. CHM is less expensive month-to-month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. All right. Good morning. It's Tuesday morning and our family has been up since 5.30 a.m. and everyone out of bed since 6 a.m. And I'm feeling pretty tired if I'm honest, even though it's only 8, 10 a.m. right now. So back on how I have no cool morning routine right now, before I got pregnant with Ethan, so when Colin was like close to turning two, I did have more of that. Uh, Colin would sleep until more like seven-ish and then I could get up at more like 6 a.m. before him. And then in pregnancy, honestly, I was like struggling to sleep a lot of the time so much that I often slept in until Colin woke up, which is more like seven. So that's kind of been the season we're in. And now we're in that season again, though, of early mornings because children are waking us up. So lately, Colin has actually been the one waking up earlier than Ethan sometimes where he'll wake up pretty early uh, and be saying like, I want my mommy, I want my mommy on repeat until we go in there. And so I'm like hearing him on the monitor and um, you know, I've tried, I've, I've tried lately actually getting in his, uh, bed with him and trying to help him keep sleeping. And like, it, it just doesn't work. So anyway, we eventually all just got up and then Ethan never went back to sleep after his 5 30 AM nursing time. So obviously none of that's ideal, right? It would be great if this was a day where they both were like in bed until seven, but then instead, it's, you know, 8, 10, and I feel like I've lived a, a quite a life this morning, um, but that's life and you roll with it. And it's really helpful to just remember it's just a season. Like I will have days where I'm going to sleep at whatever time I want and sleeping in quite a bit later, sleeping until seven or whenever, uh, and feeling like I'm getting plenty of sleep. So I, I think I have that perspective again, more in this newborn season, maybe because I've lived through it already with Colin, which as a first time mom, I remember when Colin was sleeping so bad, cause he was just, he never slept great for like a super long time. I shared that recently that like he did not start sleeping through the night consistently until he was 18 months old when he got ear tubes. Cause he was just having recurring ear infections. And then he also started sleeping better when we quit nursing which was also like around that same time. Um, so anyway, it just, it took him a while there. And I felt at times like, oh my gosh, this is never going to end. This is just like, it's always going to, I'm always going to be tired, always going to be waking up early. Um, but now I know that like, you know, it's a season and it does get to more sleep at different times. So anyway, we all got up. 
We played. We had breakfast together as a family. Um, Colin has really been into this game right now where he has his own coffee shop where he pretends he owns a coffee shop and he serves us all drinks using his different coffees and he serves his animals drinks and tea and it's really cute. So like he was ready to just like immediately play that when he woke up. And then today is what Colin has coined a stay at home day. It is so cute. He'll be like, today's a stay at home day, mama. Today's a stay at home day, daddy. Um, Which is the day that like he calls it that. I don't know if we started that first or if he made that up. I'm really not sure, but he's been saying that for a long time, but it's a day that he doesn't go to preschool. And typically Adam and I are both at home with him and Ethan all day, or at least like generally we're together with one of us, like kind of dipping out at times to work. Um, so that that's what we call it. And if you go back to episode 278, I share what my life is like coming back from maternity leave from a scheduling perspective. And so you hear me talk about that there, that Tuesday, Thursdays are like this, a little bit of work, um, but not much. I mean, I've had plenty of days where on Tuesday and Thursday, it's like, I don't work at all except for like 30 minutes for my phone. I have other days like today where I actually am going to try to get more work done because we're trying to get into a rhythm where we start splitting Tuesday and Thursday more and Adam and I are both working a bit more now that like, you know, we're both back from leave. Um, but uh, the opposite is true of like Monday and Wednesday. Those are like my work days. And you, know, you heard yesterday I had like a jam packed, like 28 things I was trying to get done. Um, so that was more like focused. Um, so anyway, something else fun from this morning that I want to share for those of you who are parents, because I think this is like, I don't know, it's been really fun. I I love stuff like this, but I just started doing something with Colin called a morning message and morning meeting. I learned this from Toddlers Can Read, which I just love his content. I discovered him like a few weeks ago, actually, at the time of recording this, like not a super long time ago. I've watched so many of his YouTube videos, all of his Instagram content, Um, just seriously love his content so much. And also like as a side note, as a business owner, I always love when I discover someone I really love in the education space. So like he is an educator, just like I sell courses, he sells courses, but it's just in such a different industry and like seeing how they do things differently. Um, but he's just an excellent teacher, like a teacher to adults has such a warmth about him. So anyway, I love his content, but he has a YouTube video that's just like 12 minutes about how to do this. He calls it like a morning message and morning meeting. So I will link to that in the blog for this. If you want to go find it, you can also just just look that up with like toddlers can read morning meeting and find it. But that explains it all. So if you want to figure out what I'm talking about, that's what it is. But this morning I did that with Colin and Ethan together while Adam was making breakfast. I was literally just like in like a side room in the house and kind of the way it works. So I got a whiteboard, um, that's like a decent size one, not huge, but one that you can like carry around in your hands, but it's like enough to write a note on. So you write a note on that, that tells your child like about the day ahead. And there's all different kinds of ways you can do it. He explains it. Like you can leave blanks to kind of fill in. It can be like, questions. You can give your child a pattern of the day, a letter of the day, those sorts of things. And so I wrote that note and then I read it to Colin and I'm like kind of trying to, right now I'm focusing on with, I'm wanting to teach him reading skills. So right now I've been focusing on teaching him that we read left to right and we start on the left page and then go to the right page. So like, I'm like holding my pen and like underlining as I read, like, dear Colin, today is blank. It is a stay at home date. I'm like, kind of like leading under it with the pen. Um, There's a lot of other things you can do with that as well that he talks about in his videos. But I wrote that note and it kind of tells him about the day ahead. It also though leaves room for us to discuss what the day of the week is, what the actual date is, like the month and the number date, and then what the weather's like. And so in the front room of our house, we have like, a little setup where I have all these posters for Colin. We have more posters in his playroom, but I have three particular ones I keep downstairs. And one of them is days of the week. One is weather. And then the other is months. So we have, it's literally so simple. It's just the posters are hung on the wall. And then, um, you know, bag clips that, that we use for food. I literally have a bag clip that we move. So it's like, you know, yesterday it was on Monday and now we move it to Tuesday. And we talked about, we sing the days of the week song. I talk about like how, okay, today's Tuesday. Yesterday was Monday. The day before that was Sunday. On Sunday, we go to church. On Monday, you go to school. On Tuesday, it's a stay at home day. And then we talked about the weather, like, Colin, what does the weather look like outside? Okay, let's move the the um, bag clip to the right weather. So it's just, it's just fun. And again, I, I think he enjoys it too. We've only done this like three or four times now, but I think I love it even more than him. Um, so it kind of has all that. And then I asked him a question, finished reading the note. And then I asked him, you know, what the letters, what we're calling the sounds of the week are. So a game that I've actually been playing with him for a long time now, 
but I changed it recently to be a more effective thing towards reading skills. But basically what you do is you write on like a piece of construction paper, just any paper, the, a letter. So it might be M and you do an uppercase and lowercase M and then you can like tape it or just set it somewhere in the room and you do other letters too. Um, when I was doing before I was teaching Colin, like, okay, this is M, this is A, this is T, this is S, you know that. But now I'm trying to teach him, you know, M, A, ah. To, like that kind of thing more. Um, the, so the sounds of the letters. Um, so we can work on learning to read that way. But anyway, so now that I'm doing it that way, I'm only doing two letters at a time. Right now we're working on M and A. So I have M in one spot, I have A in another spot. And then I say a sound. So I'll be like, ma, ma. And then he's supposed to run to the M. And then if I say a sound that's not out, so like if I go, ba, like he, that's not out. He freezes in place. And I mean, telling you, this game is just so fun for me. Like he loves it. Just like he'll freeze. He'll be, he'll like, wait, start to run when he hears something. Wait, wait, no, it's not out. It's not one of those. Um, so it's really fun to good, like get your child's energy out. Um, but also like work on a, uh, reading skill. Cause honestly, like he has no interest in sitting down with me at a table, like looking at a sheet of paper and me asking him what sound it is like that. I tried that once when I first was like, I'm going to work on this. And it was like, no, this is not working. So, um, we've done things like him jumping on the letters, him, um, racing a car to a letter, him throwing an animal to the letter. And then when, um, I first started working on like the, cause right now for a week now, we've been doing M and A. Those are like the two letters I've decided to focus on. And I'll, you know, I'll do like, okay, can you make your animal, like his stuffed animal say the sound? Okay, now let's make this stuffed animal. Now let's make this car move to it when I say the sound. Like, and then we'll do like words. Okay, it's like moon or apple or two we've been talking about. So anyway, that's a long explanation, but he really loves it. And all of that, if it sounds like it was a lot, it's not. It was like literally five to 10 minutes this morning, but I really love that intentional teaching time. I mean, you guys know I love teaching as someone who hosts this podcast and has online courses, but that definitely translates to motherhood for me. Like I have so much fun teaching call and things. And I think if we approach it that way as parents, like if we can see this fun for ourselves and learning for ourselves, like I feel like I'm trying to learn a new skill right now of how to teach reading, how to teach letter sounds. Like I've actually realized that I struggle a lot with letter sounds. I'm like, wait, I'm, I'm doing this. I might've even just now when I was saying those letter sounds done some of them wrong, but like I've, I've struggled with that a little bit. Like, wait, I'm wanting to like go moo or something for M when it's just supposed to be ma or like, you know, things like that. Anyway. Um, so it's been fun for me and I really have enjoyed that. So what is on the agenda today? So Ethan already went down for his first nap because we have been up crazy early and he already woke up. Adam actually just texted me that it was a 27 minute nap, which means Ethan will probably have four naps today. Um, He is just... Yeah, Ethan's been struggling with sleep quite a bit lately. Um, but on the agenda today, these family days for us have way less structure than what my Monday sounded like. Uh, I honestly really don't know what today will hold. Uh, right now, I'm planning to work for two hours while Adam is with the kids. So that was like our plan of like, okay, at 8 a.m., I kind of came in here to work and I'm going to work till 10. And then at 10 a.m., Adam has a work meeting. So we're going to trade out. We were hoping that Ethan's nap would at least be 45 minutes, but it was not. He says it was 27 minutes long. Um, so that was was kind of, that's kind of a bummer. And so now Ethan might actually need another nap even sooner than that. Um, anyway, though, so that's kind of like, that'll be a part of our schedule, right? Of like napping this baby, um, playing with Colin, um, doing, playing with Ethan, feeding Ethan, all those kind of things. But anyway, in this two hours from eight to 10, which I've already used 20 minutes of it, like doing this and then like a few other random admin things, but I'm going to focus on just my new website. So when it's like a short amount of time for me, if I'm trying to like tackle some like totally new project or something that requires a ton of mental energy. Like one thing I'm needing to work on soon is like my talk for show it's conference spark. Um, I'm speaking at that at the end of October, but I'm like, I don't really want to, like, I think I'll feel too much pressure, like trying to work on that right now. So I'm like, I'd rather work on something where I actually can move the needle forward of like, I can probably make a lot of progress in two hours on my blog redesign that those are the pages I've been focusing on right now. Um, you know, redesigning the blog home, the blog single post I already redesigned my 404 page for the blog, which I really love the way that looks. Um, and then the category page is another one. So I'm going to work on one of those right now. And I think that's going to allow me to like, feel like I made it, um, some distance in the, in the work, but also, um, 
not doing something that I feel like is going to be hard to put down. Like that's a good way to put it. The website's easy to like start up and stop again. Um, I also today, since it's a Tuesday, I have a new podcast episode that's aired. And so I need to promote that episode and share about it on Instagram. I also need to proof the email and send that out, um, to my email list. I actually might do that too in this two hour stint right now. Um, but I'm likely going to say promoting the episode on Instagram for later today. And ideally I would have already had a post written and like ready to go, um, like a reel made or like, um, a carousel or something like that. I don't. So I'm going to be like doing that just like when I go to post it, uh, other things potentially today, I might take Colin to build a bear this afternoon at the mall. I have been like wanting to take him there for like weeks now. I'm just, I think he's at the age where he'd really enjoy it. But every time I ask him if he wants to go to build a bear, he's like, no. So I've realized I need to quit asking if he wants to go and just tell him I have a surprise and we're going to do something fun. So, um, depending on how his nap goes, I might take him there this afternoon. I also have counseling today during nap time, during Colin's nap time, I should say. And I'm doing that virtually right now. That's been, um, something I started back up with my counselor in postpartum and it's been really helpful. So I've been doing that like not necessarily every week, but like close to it. And I've been doing it virtually, which, you know, obviously I'm a big fan of counseling. I'm married to a counselor, um, but I also had never done virtual counseling. And I felt like I was against it at first because I I like the in-person aspect of counseling, but my counselor, it does not in Franklin. And so it's quite a drive. And so I'd end up spending like an hour in a car in addition to the 50 minute session. I'm like, I just can't do that right now in this season. So I've really loved the virtual because it requires like literally me just getting out my computer and and that's it. It's like literally only the 50 minutes is the time it takes. So I'm doing that during Colin's nap, which means Adam will either be with Ethan or doing something else with Ethan's napping too. And then today in general, we kind of just go with, we go with the flow of like, what Colin ends up wanting to do. We'll spend a lot of time playing in the playroom. He'll spend some time playing independently. You know, I, we might go on a walk if the weather's not too hot, things like that. I mean, it's just very much like kind of at home. We we often on Tuesday and Thursday try to get out of the house in the morning or in the afternoon to like go do something. This morning, we're not getting out of the house because of Ethan's sleep. And then Adam, since I was going to take the first stint work and he felt like it was easier to just take care of them at home. Um, Ethan will also obviously have a bunch of naps today and we'll definitely hold him to get some of those naps longer. And yeah, I think that's generally what the day will look like. And I'll check back in at the end of the day and tell you how it all went. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm recording this on Wednesday morning, actually, because I did not open up my laptop much or even come up to my office uh, after like the two and a half hours I worked on uh, Tuesday morning. So now I'm on Wednesday. I'm, I'm working a full work day today. So let's talk about Tuesday, though, real quick. And I'm going to tell you about Wednesday's agenda. So yesterday on Tuesday, I worked for two and a half hours total. And I also should add, the way I know how much time I'm working is not just me estimating like, oh, I was kind of in my office this much time. I love tracking my time. It's It's a habit I got into early on in my business, and I use Toggle, that's T-O-G-G-L, in order to track my time. And if you go to elizabethmccravey.com slash Toggle, there's some info there, and I'm pretty sure there's a discount if you end up using the paid version, but that's what I use. And so I clock in and out of task, which allows me to also see like, okay, how many hours have I spent on this particular podcast episode? How much time do I spend in general recording podcasts? How much time do I spend in meetings? How much time do I spend in podcast interviews or working on my new website or design? I need a specific template. I can literally know how much time was spent on that. So I really love tracking time. And so that's how I get it of like the two and a half hours total yesterday was like, that's how much time I was clocked in. And then that time was a mix of recording stuff for this particular episode. And then also working on my website redesign. I also sent out my weekly email to promote that um, podcast episode that aired. And then outside of that time sitting at the computer. So that's why I did sit at the computer. I also messaged with my team some on Slack just throughout the day. And I posted a few stories on Instagram. I totally forgot to promote yesterday's episode though on Instagram. So I'm going to do that today, but I did post a few stories of just kind of like random stuff that was going on. Um, okay. So the website stuff though, that I worked on in the morning, I did that while Adam was with both kids and I did have to like take a break at some point to help make naps happen and stuff. Um, because It was kind of a crazy day with sleep, which I'll talk about in a minute. But when it comes to my website redesign, um, if I didn't already say this, I'm redesigning my website. I went through a rebrand last year where I worked with a branding agency to like get new fonts, colors, logos, all of it new patterns. I mean, it's awesome. And I've been implementing it into a new website that I started over on from scratch. So it's a big undertaking. I really started on the website probably in like 
November of last year, maybe. Um, but then I took a big pause on it with my maternity leave. And now I've been really like kicking into gear with it. So I worked yesterday, though, on the blog home and the blog single post pages within um, my new website. If you're a show user, you know what I'm talking about, that those are like templates, so to speak, within your show website that then pull in content from WordPress. So I was working on that and I feel like I'm really close on those blog pages. So today, now on Wednesday, that's actually going to be one of my focuses of working on like, okay, let's let's finish that part. And that's a big part of my redesign, right? Because my current blog is not super functional for how much content I have at this point. I designed it like four years ago or something. I mean, when I was like early into this podcast even. And so now there's so much more content there. So one of my big goals with this blog redesign is I've been really like reimagining like, okay, how do I make the blog a place that like you can go and just like stay on it a long time? Because all these podcast episodes, y'all have full blog posts with them. It's not just like a, here's a link to listen. Here's a transcript or here's like the show notes that you see on Apple and Spotify. It's like a full blog post. So I just really want to like make that even more user-friendly for people. Um, So yesterday I was working on that. And then I also was like testing some of it on my design test blog that I use within show it um, to like make sure everything works well without having to bring it live on my current website. So I did a lot of that. I sent the email. And then outside of those two and a half hours, I was with my family mainly. And then I had that 50 minute counseling session. So outside of that, that's what I was doing. And yesterday was not a very usual Tuesday for us in a lot of ways mainly because usually on Tuesdays, we like to get out of the house more than we actually did. We really, I mean, I did not really get out of the house except for in our neighborhood yesterday. Adam did, but I did not. Ethan, the way way, way it was such a weird day is that Ethan was struggling so much with naps and he also was running a low fever and was just super, super unhappy. And we were really concerned. And on Monday, our nanny had told me that she thought he was tugging at his ears a lot. And I also kind of thought that, um, and he had had an ear infection about a month and a half ago. So anyway, yesterday, with all the fussiness and like how I realized he was having a temperature, I made him a doctor appointment in the afternoon thinking like, okay, he might have another ear infection. Let's go ahead and like get ahead of this, get him checked out. And so we decided for that appointment to divide and conquer. And I stayed with, um, with Colin at home and Adam took Ethan to the doctor and turns out Ethan was totally fine. Uh, I'm glad we checked because it's like good to know, but it was also funny because our pediatrician probably thinks we're a little crazy because it was like, hey, your baby, she also thinks he's not teething, even though I totally 100% think he's teething, but she doesn't think so. But yeah, his ears look fine, which is good news, right? Like that's what I would prefer over it being like your child has an ear infection, here's an antibiotic, like I'm very happy he he's well, but it was kind of a confusing thing. But yeah, yesterday, both kids would not sleep. Colin actually skipped his nap as well and ended up getting out of his crib early which we're still in a crib for him right now. He's about to turn three in like two months. And I'm thinking now's the time to switch him to a big boy bed. We just haven't done it yet, but he's really starting to show like he'd be ready for that. Especially now that he's been potty trained for a while now. So anyway, though, his nap didn't happen, which it's so hit or miss at home. Uh, sometimes Colin will do like a two to three hour nap and other times he won't sleep at all. And then sometimes he won't sleep, but he'll be happy playing in his crib. So it's just really varies. But yesterday he was not happy playing in his crib and also did not sleep. And then, you know, Ethan was really struggling with sleep. Like we couldn't even get him to keep sleeping in our arms yesterday. It was just a very strange day where no one wanted to sleep and everyone woke up early. Um, so with both of their bad sleep days though, we actually put both of them down for bed by 6.30. Ethan was down at like 6.15 column was down at 6 30. Uh, so our evening looked a lot different because of that, which I'll get to in a moment, but some other things we did during the day. Uh, I, you know, after that time working in the morning, I, in the afternoon after Colin's you know, failed nap attempt, I set up some art project stuff for us to do, which was really fun. Um, basically we just got a lot of that kind of like construction type of paper. And I used a, you know, those little dot things that kids like playing with like, like puff balls. Um, that's why I usually call them at least, but I put one of those on a bag clip and he painted with that and he loved it. And I started with just one color and then I was like, okay, let's try two colors. And we tried mixing the colors. And I mean, legitimately he went through 30 pages of that construction paper, just doing like one small thing on each page, which felt kind of wasteful, but I'm like, he was having so much fun. And I have so much of that paper. So we did that and he literally loved it so much. And I was able to kind of be in and out of that. Um, Some of the time I was taking care of Ethan. Some of the time Ethan was napping during that. And then some of the time Adam and Ethan were at that appointment. And then additionally, Adam had two work meetings, um, all that he was doing from home. But I was with the kids while he did those things. And those, I mean, that's a cool thing about the way we kind of structure our life. But, you know, Adam, Adam has an office at home as well, but it's downstairs, which is 
really close to like all the chaos happening during the day. So he actually did both those meetings in my office, which is on the third floor. So that was nice. He just stepped away and did that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of what all we did. I mean, Adam took them to the playground in the morning um, that's close by our house. And then, I mean, I did the art project with Colin, but besides that, I mean, it was a lot of just like random playing with Ethan, working on his rolling, playing in the playroom with Colin, reading books. I mean, we watched a little TV, like that kind of stuff was what was happening. Uh, and then for dinner, I made us a marry me chicken pasta dinner. If you've ever heard of that, y'all should look it up. It's, it's a really, I think it's good, but it's called marry me chicken. It's like kind of a viral type of recipe, I guess you could say. And I made another variation of it like a month ago and didn't love it. And so I was like, but I, but I love the concept, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to try again with a new recipe. And I also didn't love this one. So I'm not going to like link to it for you or anything, but, um, yeah, I just, I didn't think it was great. Adam actually liked it more than I did, but I just didn't think it was, it didn't think it was that good. It took a lot of time to make, which was kind of chaotic when I was doing that. Colin helped me cook. Um, I was trying to actually get him to watch TV or play independently while I cooked because sometimes it can feel stressful when there's so many hot things on the stove and he wants to help, but he ended up helping and it all went well. Um, we ate breakfast and lunch as a family yesterday, which again, that's something that like, I would say it's unique about these days that we're all at home and that the kids aren't in, in, like away with a nanny or, you know, a calling at preschool is that we do end up eating a lot of meals together, even though like, even, if, even this was true too, back before Ethan was born, like if I was working all day and Adam was with Colin, we would still eat all of our meals together, which I just really, really love. So we ate breakfast and lunch as a family, but dinner was just literally absolute chaos, which I know you guys with kids know. I mean, meal time can just, first of all, it's like, what is even eating together, right? Like my toddler... Colin. I mean, it's like, it can feel like a huge accomplishment. He'll sit down with us for like five to 10 minutes. Sometimes it's less than that. But yeah, dinner just felt like chaos. Ethan was overtired. Colin was overtired. Me and Adam were both exhausted from like a long day of parenting. And so we, we kind of just ate quickly and Colin skipped dinner and didn't really eat until it was bedtime. And then, you know, Ethan was upset. We're trying to feed him. And it was just all kinds of craziness. So then after that, we, we we were putting them down early for bed because of the lack of sleep. But during bath time, Adam got a call from one of our rental property tenants that the air conditioning was broken, which we are under a heat advisory here. So that's obviously like an emergency for your tenant that you want to take care of quickly. And side note, if you didn't know, we own rental properties and manage our own properties. I say we, Adam's the one that manages them. We own them together, but he's totally like plays that property manager role, but we own five properties most of which are in the greater Nashville area. Um, and yeah, just all over the place anyway. But one of them, she called and said, Hey, the air conditioning's broken. So Adam during bath time, I was kind of like, I was handling Ethan, handling Colin's bath while Adam's on the phone with her again, kind of all felt like chaos, like I said, but he was talking to, um, one of our repair people also on the phone with the tenant messaging with the tenant. And he was trying to help her figure out if she could fix it herself. Um, or if it was something where like someone needed to come out and then the air conditioning people could not come out till tomorrow. And, um, he, yeah, Adam ended up through talking to her thinking that he would be able to fix it potentially if he went out there and that maybe she was missing something because she kind of thought she was too. So anyway, he ended up after bedtime going to that tenant's house to work on it. And because it's not, um, this, this property is like about 40 minutes from our house. That was total, like about two to two and a half hours round trip for him. So that was like his whole evening, basically from like, you know, six to like, 8.30 or 9 was kind of when he got home, uh, or 6.30, I should say, to 8.30 or 9. So I was basically this whole e evening. And real estate's so like that. You know, when he was leaving, I'm like, oh, sorry, honey. I'm sorry I have to go do that. Like, that really stinks. I know you were looking forward to just, like, relaxing tonight. Um, but he, you know, he pointed out that that's like real estate, you know, sometimes like when things are going well with your properties, you don't really do much. You might not even think about much. You might not talk to your tenants. You're just collecting rent and you're paying the mortgage and you're, you're making money. Right. But then when stuff goes wrong, there is stuff you often have to do immediately. It's like, yeah, someone's air conditioning's out. We're going to go take this seriously. Or oftentimes you have a really big repair. Like we've had multiple properties in the last um, 12 months that have had to get new HVACs. And so it's like, I think this is actually one of them now that I think about it, which is why Adam was like calling them like, hey, the HVAC seems to have stopped that y'all just <laughs> installed. Um, but it's like, yeah, you have big repairs. And then also when people move in and out, that's another time I would say that real estate ends up feeling like a bit more work if someone's, you know, not renewing their lease. Or even if they are, that can be work of like their lease renewal process. But um, when someone's moving out, you have to find a new tenant and realist and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, though, 
last night was a night where our real estate business had work to be done and Adam went and did it like a champ. And I know he got to listen to some podcasts he really enjoyed and he talked my ear off about it when he got home. So that that could be a fun part of it, right? Like that long drive listening to a fun podcast. Uh, but while he was gone, after we got the kids down, like I said, that was at like 6.30ish that I got done putting Colin down, Adam put Ethan down and then like left to go take care of things for this tenant. Um, but while he was gone, I cleaned up our crazy house because y'all these days, again, I'm sure you guys can relate, but when like everyone's home all day and you have a toddler and they're pulling stuff out, I mean, we like try to get Colin to help clean up before bedtime, but we did not really do that much last night because it was like, he was just so tired. I was like, we need to just get him in bed. But I did some cleaning. I like loaded and ran the dishwasher. I pumped. Um, and then I read a book and relaxed. I just like sat, um, on our sofa, read a book, relaxing. And then when Adam got home, we sat up and talked for a while and we had some cookie dough together. <laughs> um, and then we went off to bed and actually read a bit more um, before falling asleep. So that was Tuesday. It was a long, long day of parenting with some work thrown in there, with a random doctor appointment thrown in there, with children not sleeping thrown in there, and with um, real estate in- investment things happening. So that was our Tuesday. Now let's talk about Wednesday. So today on Wednesday, everyone was up and out of bed at 6.30 today, which was better than yesterday with like that 5.30, 6 a.m. timing. And Ethan had two night feeds overnight, which also didn't feel too rough because first one was not till like 4 a.m. So they were just really close together right before I woke up basically. But that still makes you tired, right? Like that's something, guys, if you're in a season like me where you are not sleeping well for whatever reason, whether it's children waking you up or, you know, you're pregnant and having insomnia or you're having other health things causing you to wake, like, I don't know, so many different reasons we cannot sleep well. It really does like affect how you feel all day. And so just remember that and be gracious on yourself with it. Um, That's something I've had to like really set the tone for myself and my work with right now of just like on days where the sleep's rough, rougher the night before, like expecting that to affect my work and expecting that to affect my feels um, and how I, how I operate all day, which, but last night though, all that to say was actually like a decent amount of wake ups, but we've had, we've had worse, right? So today though is a preschool day for Colin. He goes Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So today's Wednesday, he's going there and it's a day that our nanny is here with Ethan. So it's her, she's here two days a week. This is the second one. So this is my other big work day this week, right? So I got a lot I got to do. Um, and it's also Wednesday's a day that Adam typically has a really big work day with lots of sessions uh, in his counseling and also where he works later into the evening. So at one point, his schedule was causing him to, because people like to do counseling later at night, right? Like when they're done with work, um, he was having to work nights a lot. And after Ethan was born, we were like, we can't like keep that up as a thing. So he got his schedule kind of rearranged with his clients to be where it's just one night he goes later. And it's not because tonight he's not, he's actually not going as late as some Wednesdays. Some Wednesdays he literally will be not home until like 8 p.m. because he'll have a session ending at more like 7 or 7.30 or 7.20 and then like will come home after that, um, which I know is just, that's a long day for him, right? So today it's actually going to be earlier, which I appreciate, but still like later, like he won't be home till like 6.45 or so. So anyway, though, today that's kind of what's going on. I'm working, Adam's working, and we have childcare for both kids. So we had breakfast together as a family when everyone woke up. And Colin wanted to do more art this morning. Just like I said yesterday, we were doing, me and him doing all this art stuff, which is just so fun, y'all. He is like, literally, I love this age. He's out of like, right at turning three. He's just so much fun, so precious. And he's also really snuggly right now, which I feel like around two, he went through a phase where he didn't want to snuggle because everything was like, I'm on the move. I'm trying to like discover things and like figure out the world. And now he's more like, he's still doing that, but he like wants to snuggle a lot. Anyway, it's just a really fun age. So um, he was like, he wanted to, he said, mom, I want to do my art again this morning. So I got all that set up for him and he did more art. And then we did not get him dressed until after he got done doing all of his art. And then, you know, during that time, Adam went and got ready for work. I mean, you know, packed up the car. We were taking care of Ethan, getting him dressed and fed and all the things. And I actually did not get ready for the day until after Adam and Colin left for school and work, which they left around 8 a.m. And then I had like 30 minutes before I put Ethan down for a nap where I, Ethan was, he was tired because if again, that's like a, it was an early wake up for him. So he was really ready for a nap, but I tried some baby wearing while I like did my makeup, which did not work great. And then I put him down for a nap and I got ready real quick. And our nanny got here a little after nine and I actually was already extending Ethan's nap because again, y'all, his sleep has just been so tough lately with naps specifically. And I even put him down awake for that nap. 
I know I don't do everything perfect in baby sleep, but I feel like I did a good job with that. And he still woke up after 30 minutes, but she got there while I was holding him for the snap and I actually just like in the dark gave him to her and then she kept holding him. And so I think she's still holding him right now, actually giving him like a longer nap. And then when she's done holding him, I'm going to go downstairs and talk to her and tell her like some things about like that doctor visit yesterday and other things she needs to know for the day with Ethan. But like, yes, like I said, this is my other big work day this week. And actually next week, she's only coming one day. So I'm only going to have one full work day next week and I have meetings on that day. So I'm feeling like today I'm like, I got to jam. I got to work. I got a lot of, I, I want to get done. And it is challenging sometimes for me to prioritize. Okay. Like, so this is how many hours I have. These are different things I could work on. Cause there are a lot of different things I could work on, right? There's always stuff you can do in your business, like literally always. So for me prioritizing, like, okay, what do I want to work on? what makes sense for today in light of other things. Like today I don't have any meetings, which is really nice. So I can really just like focus on all these other things I need to do in the business. So what I'm doing today, a big thing I love doing that I think is so smart and just intentional that you want to do as a business owner is before you make your to-do list, or sorry, before you open your computer, I should say, make your to-do list for the day. So like I mentioned on Monday, I use the full focus planner. You can go to elizabethcrave.com slash full dash focus to see information on that. But I literally came into my office, did not open my computer, got it out and wrote down all the tasks I want to do today. I wrote down what my daily big three are, which says are like, I'm looking at this giant list. I'm like, okay, some of these things aren't going to get done. Realistically, what are like the three things that are really important that get done that have to be done this week if I don't get to do them tomorrow? What moves the needle forward the most? And I wrote those down. Um, But total, I wrote down 26 things. So really similar to Monday and the amount of things I'm writing down. And some of them are personal. Most of them are work though. Uh, And these are the main things. So first thing is recording this for you, right? Like I wrote down that I had to record Tuesday's end of day, which I can now mark off. Uh, And then I wanted to, I wrote some notes down before sitting down to record this and then recording this Wednesday one that I'll also record at the end of the day. So that's some of my stuff. I have to pay a team member. Today's the last day of the month and I did not pay her already because I was waiting to hear back from her on something. So I got to do that. And then doing my own business finances and paying myself. So uh, that's something I do. I have a, I have a whole financial routine. If you go to listen to cravy.com slash profit, and I will link to that, you can get my profit first guide. And it's like the seven steps I do at the end of the month. Um, it's like literally a guide with like screenshots and all kinds of stuff to help you really understand it. I've had so much positive feedback on this guide, y'all, and it's completely free. So go check it out. But I, I need to do that whole process, right? Um, today's literally the last day of the month. Ideally, I would have done this yesterday, but I feel like the end of the month has like snuck up on me. And I was like, wait, today's not only the last business day, it's like literally the last day of the month. So anyway, I have to do all that. And then I have to pay myself. And that will probably take like 30 to 45 minutes, I would estimate. And then uh, on my new website, like I want to spend a good amount of time working on that and just really getting into like a design zone for myself, which is so fun for me. I really, I'm going to have a blast doing that today, but I'm hoping to finish up the blog pages on my new website because I feel pretty close on those. Uh, I'm definitely going to be getting out some sheets of paper, maybe even use some of those construction pages that Colin will probably just gonna throw away that he was coloring on, but I need to get out some stuff and kind of like wireframe some ideas for things I haven't fully figured out yet on those blog pages. So I'm hoping to finish those. And then I have two reels I want to record. Um, One is the one I meant to record Monday and didn't. Remember I said Monday I had two pieces of content I wanted to make about this giveaway and I only did one. So the other one's that. And that one should be pretty quick to make. The other reel I want to make is going to take me longer. And I actually, back on how it's like you got to be strategic with your time when you don't have as much work hours. I actually am debating still on whether or not it makes the most sense for me to do that today or not. Because part of me is like on Friday when I'm solo with Ethan, then that's a good thing that I could potentially just like do during one of his naps when it's just me and him all day. But I think I'm going to do it today anyway, because I feel like I feel really excited about it. So the reel that I'm planning to make, I had the idea for it during postpartum. And I, when I was on my maternity leave and I like made a note about it in my phone, I wrote down exactly what the vibe is. And I have like yeah, I just think it's gonna be really funny. And I hopefully feel like it'll go over well when I share it. But it just is something I feel like it'd be fun to make. Basically, the concept, though, is me in the car with my kids versus when you're not with your kids, it's going to flip back and forth between like, 
listening to like some really funny, like animated children's songs, and then listening to stuff like a crime podcast, a business podcast, a birth podcast. I know that might not sound as funny as I'm talking about it, but I think it'll be really funny. And so I'm excited to film that. And I actually, like I said, I already wrote out in my, in a note on my phone, like what the vision for it was of like, okay, I need an audio from a birth podcast, from my own podcast of so business, from this, from that. And then last night, I didn't say this actually, but when Adam was still gone, doing the stuff for our rental properties, I actually pulled some audio from these different podcasts and and music I want to use for that reel. And I saved it on my phone by screen recording it and I'm going to play it. I have two phones I'm going to use for it. I actually have Adam's old phone to help me be able to record the reel, like when you're playing audio, you know, but still be able to record on the other phone. So I have all that ready. So that's helpful too, that I did some of that last night. Because I just, again, I feel really excited about this real, it sounds fun to me to make. So I need to do it today, right? Because I'm excited about it. So I probably will do that, um, even though I, I can debate of like if it makes sense to or not. And then I have, I'm going to write an email to my email list about this, this podcast giveaway, and I'm going to schedule it to be sent out tomorrow. And then I have some stuff for that template project I was talking to you about where we're making new add-on templates. And I, it's mainly communication at this point that I need to kind of do today of like, project overseeing type stuff. And then this is fun, but Adam and I's nine year wedding anniversary is actually tomorrow, which we're going on a date night. And I'm really excited about that. And crazy, it's been nine years, but something I do every anniversary, I started it literally our first anniversary, just kind of on a whim, not even thinking I was making a tradition out of it, but it ended up becoming a tradition. But every anniversary, it ends up, it's like 24 photos, but I make a collage that I make. Now I'm making Canva. I used to make it in Illustrator, in Adobe Illustrator, but it's like on an eight by 10 print and we have it framed, but it's like 24 photos from that year of marriage. And we have them all hanging in our wall. So right now we have eight years up in rows of three out in our hallway and they're all in order. And it just, it's really fun. Like you can just see like the evolution of our lives really of like, okay, here we are as a young married couple. And you see a lot of like the photos can kind of tell a story of different things that just have happened in our life and over our years of marriage. And you can see, you know, when Colin was born, when Ethan was born, that's what's going to be in this one, right? My pregnancy actually with Ethan plus him being born have all happened in this last year of marriage. So anyway, I want to make that collage, which means picking photos for it and then making it all in Canva and then ordering the print. And I'll probably go pick up the print tomorrow. It would not be a big deal if I didn't have it ready tomorrow or anything, but I just think it's fun. Like we, we've enjoyed in past anniversaries, like looking at it and talking about all the photos and kind of like reminiscing on the last year together. So I'm hoping to get that done today. And that's a personal thing, right? So like when I think about, okay, like when would I like to work on that? That's a good thing that I might do when I'm kind of taking a lunch break or when I'm pumping or when I'm like, I need a break from like the mental load of like working on my website, uh, that can be a nice little thing to work on. And then another thing I'm trying to do today is work out because on these days when I have both kids in childcare is a day I like to go to the gym and I probably will do that right before getting Colin from preschool. And then this evening I'm going to be solo with both kids until Adam gets home at like sometime between 6.30 and 7. And um, yeah, that'll be like an all hands on deck parenting time for me of like getting everyone fed, bathed and like ready for bed. I probably won't put them down for bedtime until Adam gets home just to like keep things easier. But yeah, that will be something that'll be helps me my evening after a long work day, which also makes me feel motivated. Again, like we have to think about prioritizing our own our own selves and our mental, physical well being. But like when I think about gearing up for like about two to two and a half hours tonight solo at that time of day, I'm like, I need to go into that feeling refreshed as a mom and like ready to go. So I'm going to try not to be like working right up until that time starts for me um, so that I can go into it feeling more refreshed. So anyway, that is it. And I'll check back in with you guys before I end the work day to tell you how it all went. All right, guys, it is 4.05 on Wednesday, and today I have worked now five hours and 45 minutes is like what my total clock time is, and I'm stopping work for the day to probably go to the gym, but I might even just go to walk outside. That's kind of what I'm feeling like doing, and then I'll go pick up Colin from school. So let me tell you about what I kind of focused on today. So I started off the day doing stuff for this podcast like I'm doing right now, and then I did do my business finances and paying that team member kind of like all as one task, and I included things like paying some quarterly taxes. Uh, I paid myself. I did my profit first. I looked over all my numbers and kind of did some estimates on various things. I paid off my credit card. So that's that's all stuff that goes into 
into that. And again, if you go to elizabethmccravey.com slash profit, you can get my step-by-step guide. That's exactly how I do it. But that took me, let's see, that took me 35 minutes. So really not long guys like to do that whole process. It could have taken a little longer potentially, um, or even been faster if I had not been doing some tax things, but I feel really good about that. And that was a great thing to like knock out immediately today because that was something that was like an absolute must. And then after I got done with that, I did I, I did transition to social media content and I did ultimately decide to film that reel today that I was really excited about. Uh, I can still kind of debate if it was the best use of my time, but it doesn't really matter. It's already done. But today with that reel and another one and editing some content, I spent two and a half hours on like and posting it too on social media, a little less than two and a half hours. But isn't that crazy y'all? I mean, I'm sure again, you guys can relate, but like Instagram content, video content specifically, whether it's for Instagram or something else can just take so much time. And that was with me having the concepts planned already, right? It still took that long. So what I did was I first recorded the reel that was just to promote my podcast giveaway. And I just did that in my office with my tripod and my phone. And I actually ended up deciding not to post that one yet. I'm going to post it either tomorrow or Friday. And then I went and filmed that funny real I'd been planning to do in the car. And I, you know, I literally told her nanny, I'm like, I'm about to do some work in the garage. Kind of hard to explain. You'll see later. Um, but I went out there and I just like, you know, I played the clips from my husband's old phone and then I had them go through our Bluetooth speaker of the car. And then I was just recording myself kind of like acting it out. I will link to the reel in the show notes for this episode. So you guys can just see the final product, but I did all that. And here, here's why it was two and a half hours. Cause it kind of, is like, Oh my gosh, why did that take so long? Cause I actually was moving super quick through it all. So I spent 30 minutes recording all of it. Okay. Got all the clips done. It might've been a little less than 30 minutes or maybe a little more. I can't remember exactly, but I spent a lot of time on that. Right. And then I pulled back into the garage. I had to pull the car out of the garage. So it's like in direct sunlight. And then I pulled back into the garage and I still had the camera on towards me. And I realized, oh my gosh, the lighting is so much better in the dark garage, actually, instead of being out in the like direct sunlight of the middle of the day. And I, I literally debated myself. I watched the clips again. I was like, oh, maybe I can just still use these. I don't want to have to redo them all. And then I decided like, nope, the lighting is like that much better that I think it's worth it to just like redo them all. And honestly, I think the second time through was better. And there were some I skipped that I already knew, like I didn't really like that much, like some of the things I had planned to use. So I redid them all. And the second time through was faster. And then I kind of debated, like, do I edit them right now? Uh, Like, do I edit the reel right now and post it today, or do I do it another time? And again, I like to kind of work with when I feel creative and what I feel creative about, but I felt really excited about working on it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to edit it right now as well. And it felt like a good kind of little passion project thing, so to speak, because it's just a funny reel. It's not like necessarily, actually, it isn't all promoting anything in my business, but I got out Final Cut Pro. That's what I decided to use to create the reel because I knew it was going to be so much faster than if I were to like take in all these clips and do it within the Instagram app. So I brought in Final Cut Pro edited it all. It took me about 30 minutes to edit the whole thing together. And then I posted it and that was that. And so that was kind of the content. I did do some editing as well on the other reel that I had also filmed. So yeah, just a lot of time spent on that. And I have had seasons of my life where I do social media content much more efficiently, where I'll kind of get ready. I'll have some different outfits and I'll have all these like concepts completely planned out. And then I just film, film, film for like three or four hours. And then I have a lot of content that I batch edit it, then I batch caption it and things like that. And that has worked really great for me at different times. Right. And I, I love making social media content. So it's fun for me regardless. But when I've done that system of like pre-planning what I'm going to do, then filming it, then editing it all in batch work, it works so much better, is much more efficient than what I did today and what I've been doing this week in general. But this is kind of me coming back from maternity leave of like, I'm figuring out, new rhythms. And realistically, what I should probably end up doing with my two work days a week with like childcare for both kids completely is like one day a month, make one of those days just a straight up content day for like half the day, maybe, and go through and make as much stuff as I need to make, which I'm not posting that much right now of that type of content. So that actually feels really doable. But again, that's not what I'm doing right now. So it's a little uh, less efficient than that. Uh, After that, though, I spent really the rest of the day today, generally speaking, working on my new website. And let me look exactly. I'm I'm looking at my time in toggle right now. So I spent about two hours on designing the new website and I feel really good. I wish I could say I'm like marking off all those blog pages, 
But the truth is I'm not like they, if I were to publish my new website today, it would be like, yes, the blog looks awesome. It's great. But I'm still debating on like adding some more features and sections and things like that to the blog templates. But I did make the blog home blog, single post blog category and blog search. And then I did some more stuff to my 404 page, to just add something else there. So I, I did a lot of work on all those in that two hours. And unfortunately I was so bummed, but I made a canvas and you guys know in show it canvases are like sections basically, but I made a canvas that looked really nice. It was on the blog single post to like promote my podcast. And then I made it into a site canvas and all of a sudden show it like refreshed for me and was like, Oh, it's not working now. And I lost it. I lost the whole design. I was so bummed. And I contacted show it's customer support because they are the best and so fast. And uh, at first he thought he was, he wrote me back really quickly, by the way, it was like maybe 30 minutes later. And he first, he thought he'd be able to get it back for me and restore it. But then because I had done so many other edits in the like 30 minutes that um, I was waiting for his response, it was not a good idea to restore it. So I just had to remake it, which is kind of a bummer, but also only took me like maybe 10 minutes or so to redo that one. So yeah, I feel good about that. I feel good about the website work. There are lots of things I did not get to though. Like there were some particular communication things on my to-do list that I'm just not going to have gotten to, which is okay. Again, that's stuff that like is things I can really go easily in and out of. So that might actually be better for my work day tomorrow because I am hoping to work some tomorrow with Adam being with the kids since I only have one day with both kids in childcare next week. So I'm hoping to, to be able to do some of that tomorrow. But there were some things I missed. Like I did not write the email about my giveaway, but again, that's something I could do tomorrow. And there's some other communication things I didn't do. And I also did not get to our anniversary print stuff of like creating it and like getting it ordered or any of that. But I'm actually thinking that might be something I just do tonight while if I have an opportunity with the kids kind of be more independent or even after they go down for bedtime, working on that and then ordering it. And like I order my photos from Walgreens. It's super, super fast. So I know I'll be able to get it quickly tomorrow. So anyway, that is Wednesday. I feel like it was a good work day. Again, on these days, it's kind of crazy. Like I, I can be pretty cooped up in my office all day. Like my desk right now is chaotic. I have two coffees on here. I have my plate from lunch, my water, and then I have all my pump stuff because I just got done pumping um, for breast feeding. And so I got to go bring that downstairs, but my desk is just like an absolute mess that I need to clean up before I completely stop work. And I also forgot to add, I spent a decent amount of time today too, which is why it's like, you know, not as many hours as, um, maybe it sounds like it should be. I spent a decent amount of time going downstairs and just hanging out with our nanny and Ethan. Ethan is still in just like a really fussy place and we're trying to figure out what's going on with him. But, um, he might just kind of be going through like a developmental leaf or just kind of the sleep regression teething who knows, but he was a bit fussy today. And I, I hung out with them quite a few times and just like checking in and out sort of thing. That's actually probably what I'm going to do again right now before I go try to work out real quick. So the rest of the evening though, I will get calling from school. I'll be solo with both kids until like six thirty or seven. Then Adam will be home. And I'm honestly not sure what me and Adam will do after we get the kids down. We have our date night tomorrow for our anniversary. So we might just kind of maybe try to find something on TV to watch. We don't have any shows right now. We just finished presumed innocent. And it was so good on Apple TV. Highly recommend it. We finished that last week. So since then, we haven't really had anything to watch on TV. So maybe we'll try to start a new show or something or just sit up and read or just sit up and talk. So anyway, that's it. Great day. And I hope you had a great day as well. Hello on Thursday mid-morning. It is 1020 right now, and we've just been having a family day so far, basically. So everyone woke up at 6 a.m., Wish I'd been a little later, honestly, but it's fine. We did it. And this morning when Adam and I were talking about, okay, like what are all the things we're trying to get done today? We both wanted to work out. And I felt like, okay, you know what? I'm not much of a morning workout person these days, especially before eating breakfast. But I felt like so wanting to get to the gym because actually I thought about going to the gym yesterday before picking up calm from school, but ended up realizing I did not have enough time. So I just walked around our neighborhood for like 20 minutes before pickup. And it was so freaking hot because <laughs> we were in our, under heat advisory, but I did that. And so did not get to do any strength training. So I felt the craving of like, I really, it feels important to me to get a workout in today. So Adam encouraged me like, Hey, go ahead and go to the gym. So I went at seven, was home by seven 30 because the place we work out is, is very close to our house. And that felt so good for it to be seven 30 today. And I had already had a workout in, uh, it was just like a 22 minute workout, but felt really good got some good strength moves in. And if you're curious or if you're looking for like 
a good workout program or something free, honestly, to, that you can do from home or from a gym. I love Nourish Move Love Workouts um, on YouTube. Her name's Lindsay. I would actually love to have her on this podcast to like talk the business of building a YouTube business, which is what she's done basically. So I, I actually probably should email her because I've thought about that so many times. But anyway, her workouts are incredible. And I discovered her actually when I was pregnant with Colin and had gotten used to working out regularly as a person who had not been pregnant. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, now I'm pregnant. I'm trying to transition the way I work out to being something that's easier on my body. And everything I was finding online basically like assumed as a pregnant woman that you had not worked out prior. And so it was all super, super easy, nothing very challenging. I was very afraid to like lift heavy and to do things I had been used to doing in the gym. And then I discovered her workouts. And I, and the first one I ever discovered was called advanced pregnancy strength training. It was like a 30 minute video. I've done that video so many times. That was like my lead in to nourish, move, love workouts. And now I just love doing them all the time. That's basically what I do for exercises. I'll go currently, my goal is like two to three times a week doing one of her strength workouts. And then besides that, I'll do like walking and sometimes I'll make up my own workout in the gym, honestly following a lot of like the format and moves I've learned from her. But those workouts are what work for me really well in my season of life. And there have been other times in my life where I've been more of like someone who has like an ebook I'm working through or like finding workouts on a blog or running. I went through a big season when I was in college where I was really into running. So anyway, it changes. But today I did an arms and back workout that was 22 minutes. It's part of her strong in 20 program, which is a really great place to start with nourish people love. If you're like wondering where to start. Um, those I've really enjoyed because they're all 20 minute workouts and they're intense though. And you like get it done fast, but it's a really good quality workout. So that's what I go to when I only have like 20 minutes. And then sometimes if I have more time, I'll do one of her like 30 minute workout videos. But generally speaking, her videos are all under 45 minutes, mostly hovering around 30. And she's a mom of three and like her focus is functional strength training. So you're doing moves that help you in everyday life, doing things like picking up a kid with one hand, a grocery bag with the other kind of concept. And so I actually, I feel that a lot in my life that like, I'll do a, something at home literally. And I'm like, Oh yeah, this like resembles what I was doing in the gym. So anyway, love that. I love that. It was seven 30 and I'd already worked out. And I just know, like I felt this leaving the gym this morning, but I just feel so much better as a wife, mom and, and a business owner when I get to exercise, especially when I have a day where I'm just sitting at my desk all day, especially in this heat where I'm not going on walks as much randomly. Um, that tends to be something I like to do is like a work break of just like going on a quick walk around our neighborhood. But that felt really good to get that workout in. So after I worked out, I took the world's fastest shower and then we all went to breakfast as a family, which is you know something we like to do on Tuesday and Thursdays. I didn't say this at the start of today, but Tuesdays and Thursdays are both days that we have both kids at home without childcare. So we sometimes go to breakfast or something. So we went to our, one of our absolute favorite restaurants, Stay Golden. And from there, it was a good breakfast experience. Ethan fell asleep after being very upset in the car on the way there, which happens. He was trying to fall asleep and couldn't. So he fell asleep and then he slept while we were there and then woke up when we got home. And so basically we're all together until like 10 a.m. And now Adam and I have started taking turns on working. I've been sitting here working for about like 10 minutes or so before I started recording this. So here's kind of the plan for today. Today's plan will be to hardly get any work done. You know, on Tuesday, I worked about two and a half hours today. I imagine it'll be less than that, but I do have some important things I want to get done. Besides that, I'm going to be taking care of the kids. Some, uh, we'll kind of see, maybe I'll get more work done than I'm thinking, but right now I'm getting a few random work things done while Adam is with both of them. He's actually out in the neighborhood at the playground with them. So things I'm trying to do though, is one posting on Instagram, which shouldn't take me too long. Uh, it's actually our wedding anniversary. So instead of posting the real I'd plan to do, I'm going to post a little something about our wedding anniversary, our nine year wedding anniversary, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, that's also partially why we wanted to all go to breakfast as a family today. We were like, we got to do something fun to celebrate our anniversary. And Colin jokingly this morning was like, I'll, I was like, I will treat you for your anniversary and I will drive you there, which of course he cannot do. Uh, so that's something I'm doing today though. And then I got to write and send that email blast about the giveaway I'm doing for the podcast. And then I have a few different communication things with my team and some invoices to pay for people because it is August 1st. So that's some stuff that kind of 
It's coming up there and then recording for this podcast right now, which will take me, you know, about 10 to 20 minutes. So that's something else today. And and those are really the main things. I feel like I'm going to try to focus on emailing some people back because I'm really behind on my inbox right now. And then some communication with team and then like sending that email, posting on social media. Those are my main things. You know, so yesterday I was really diving deep into the website. I actually feel like today I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on these other more like admin type tasks. And then next week, I guess, get back to the website. Um, next week I only have one day of childcare with uh, our nanny there. So that'll be kind of interesting. It might just be more of like a pause on that. But anyway, that's kind of what we're doing. And then Adam is also going to work some today. So we'll switch and it'll kind of happen at various times. Um, he also wants to go to the gym today, but he's going to wait to do that and let me go first this morning. So he's going to do that later. And then something else I have to do is make a note for our babysitter coming tonight about Ethan and Colin's routines and just stuff she needs to know. So Adam and I for our nine year anniversary, which is actually two days, we're doing the date on our anniversary, but we are going out to dinner and having a date night, which is fun. And this is actually our first sitter that's not like just family helping since Ethan's been born. And she actually already knows Colin well, so that works out great. So she like understands Colin, but she has not babysat for us before. So making her a note with like Colin's routine and stuff and our plan is actually that we're going to put Ethan down first. So she will only be dealing with Colin. And then uh, we're gonna let Colin stay up later tonight with her and then like have a slightly later bedtime and she'll put him down for bed. So that's kind of our plan. But I got to make some notes for her about that and also like prepare some things for them and like straighten the house some because it feels kind of chaotic right now. So that's something else we've got to do today. And then generally speaking, we'll kind of just be playing together as a family, taking turns, doing random stuff similar again to Tuesday. I don't have any Big, big thing planned. I probably won't get out of the house with the kids this afternoon. We'll probably just be home the rest of the day besides like going to a playground or something. But that again could change. I could be interested if if Colin seemed like he was in the mood for it to go out somewhere. And hopefully both of them will nap better today than they did on Tuesday. And like I said, tonight we're doing a date night at one of our favorite restaurants for our anniversary. So that will be really fun. So that's it. That's the agenda for today. And I'll either check back in at the end of the day or on Friday morning to tell you how it all went. All right, guys, it is Friday morning now, 8.24 a.m., and let me tell you a little bit about the rest of the day Thursday. So yesterday, I only clocked an hour and 13 minutes of work at my computer, and then, as usual, I did a few different things for my phone at various points throughout the day, but it was you know even less than on Tuesday. Tuesday was like two and a half hours. Yesterday was just an hour and 13 minutes, and that was like truly just me like getting through some various miscellaneous tasks in my business. I didn't even like clock in and out of different things in toggle. I just kind of like worked real quick, got all that done. That was in just one stint, and then that was it. And so we basically had a family day outside of that. Adam did more work stuff than I did, I would say. So I was with the kids some while he was doing that, but neither of us had any meetings yesterday, which again was different than how it was on Tuesday. So just a few, I mean, again, it was just like a day at home. Like I don't really, I mean, I we went out to breakfast, like I already said, and then did all kinds of random stuff. Both kids slept a little better than on um, Tuesday. So that was good. But the few things I want to just like talk about, I guess that were some fun things I can tell you about our date night. And then also an activity I did with Colin. So I love baking in general and cooking, especially baking like sweets and stuff I always have. Uh, But I've loved getting to do that with Colin now. And it just gets more and more fun the older he gets. But we started cooking together as soon as he could like stand up in his learning tower. So if you're a parent, you're thinking about like, oh yeah, baking with my my kid sounds fun. Like a young toddler can totally do this with you without being able to communicate well, and it'll just be messy and chaotic, and it will still be that way when they're almost three two. Uh, but it's just so fun. So yesterday though, Colin and I made blueberry muffins, and it's a recipe that I've made with him probably like four times now. This particular recipe, and I'm gonna link to it for you guys in the show notes because I believe it is the perfect recipe to make with kids because it's really hard to mess up. There's a lot of different like learning opportunities within it. And they end up tasting really good. Like we all ate one of these muffins for breakfast this morning with everything else we were having actually. So it's like just a really good, good dish. Um, So it has a lot of great teaching opportunities in it. And also like, yeah, you know how a lot of recipes, it's like you're supposed to mix all the 
liquids at once and then you mix all the um like the flour and baking soda and stuff this recipe tells you to do that but you can actually just do it all in one bowl and it ends up working really well but I feel like there's good learning opportunities right so like you know there's a whole stick of butter used and so like I have Colin unwrap the butter he puts it in the glass bowl and then I microwave and we talk about how like hey it went from solid to now it's liquid and like watch it change okay has it melted all the way okay we need to microwave it more and let's stir it and then with adding like blueberries and stuff like that you can like literally let your kid add them like one by one like literally just putting blueberries in one after the other I used to do that with Colin when he was little I'd be like yeah like can you actually add like three more blueberries and then, you know he counts in one two three more blueberries and then uh it doesn't call for cinnamon this recipe doesn't but I usually like Colin loves like putting spices into things so I'll just like let him put as much cinnamon as he wants and then you can also sprinkle some sugar on top or make cinnamon sugar on the top uh, and you know and then have them put it all into the muffin tin so it's just anyway it's a really good recipe and again they turn out delicious me and Colin and Adam all love them so I did that with Colin in the afternoon and I just have so much fun baking with him and while I was doing that Adam was actually holding Ethan for a nap trying to help him nap longer because like I said he's just in like a fussy kind of phase right now I think he's going through a leap, but we all had fun yesterday. And, you know, with Ethan, some of the times with him while Colin was sleeping, we did things like read, we worked on rolling, you know, the kind of things you do with babies, baby wearing some, all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, fun day, more mundane, honestly, like just a lot of different random things with kids and then, uh, but really fun. So then we went on our date night, date night last night, which was so fun, um, celebrating our nine year anniversary. And we had not done a fancy restaurant without our kids since Ethan has has been born. So we've done more just like, and we had not hired a babysitter yet either since he'd been born. So we've done more just like casual date nights after we get both kids asleep, when we have like one of our family members here staying with us. And then we went on our beach trip when Ethan was two months old with the kids. We ate at some nice restaurants then, but it was like with the whole family, you know, eating at like 4.45 PM. So it was really fun um, going out having some drinks and delicious food together and still getting in bed in time for like Adam to feel good when he has a really big work day today and for me to feel good when I have a really big mom day. So now let me tell you about Friday. As I'm recording right now, I actually just got Ethan down for his first nap of the day. And this is a solo day, just me and Ethan. That's what Fridays are. Going forward for like, I don't know how long. I'm planning for it to like just be a thing I'm doing because I really enjoy it. I want this one-on-one time with him. And it does, I'll be real, it feels hard at times. Not hard being with him, although taking care of a baby is hard, I, I will say. I think it's hard. But hard is in like the balance between being a working mom and then doing a whole day where I'm not really working and don't have childcare help after only having like two days with everyone in childcare this week. So I can feel the pull of like, oh, there's all these things I need to do and work, but I'm trying to prioritize, okay, like what's the most important things? What are the things that absolutely need to get done? Because I personally... With Ethan's sleep right now, I think it can be really, really hard to go back and forth all day between like, okay, taking care of the baby, doing some things for myself when he's sleeping instead of just working the whole time and like being present with him. It can feel hard to do all the things like the working, the presence and the, you know, holding for naps and whatever else without going crazy if you're just juggling them all and just going between them all really, really quickly. So again, especially with naps being shorter. So I just shout out to all the working moms without childcare help on a day, a week, always, like whatever it is, it is really hard because when nap time comes, you often need to rest yourself or you feel like you need to do the things around your home that you didn't get to do when the kids were awake. Or if you have multiple children you're taking care of, you don't really get a nap time break as a mom. So it's like, yeah, just just a lot there. Um, And I'm still trying to figure it out, right? Of like what makes sense for us. So like for me and Ethan last Friday, I did not work at all. I did not even touch my laptop. I did like maybe one thing for my phone, but I really tried to focus the day on like, I'm just being with him. And I rested more or did things around our home during nap times, but honestly ended up holding him for naps a lot. And then one nap he did in the car. So it was like, you know, it wasn't that much nap time breaks, but that was really good for me on that Friday. But then today I'm looking ahead at a week where I only have one day with our nanny here. And also I have to get stuff done for this episode actually to get to my podcast editor because she's going out of town. So I'm like, I need to get this to her. And then there's some communication things actually for this podcast. I get, I've been working on the podcast a lot this week, I feel like, but there's some things relating to that that I need to do on my laptop that I actually already kind of started on this morning from my phone back in how I do things on my phone randomly. I was doing some Slack messaging at like 7.30 a.m. this morning. So yeah, I do stuff like that. But today, let me kind of tell you what I'm planning exactly. 
Oh my gosh. As soon as I said that, y'all, Ethan wakes up from his nap and he's only been down 17 minutes and I've been recording this for seven minutes. Y'all, sleep regressions are hard. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not hard or you should just be able to push through it because it is so hard. Like a nap only lasting 17 minutes without help is like, that's so, so challenging. Um, and again, he, he was sleeping better at one point. But anyway, I'm going to kind of let him see if he will work through this and keep talking to you guys. But I might end up like literally it being that right now I thought I was going to get a few work things done. And instead I got eight minutes of this podcast recording done and that's it. So we'll see. He might push through on the sleep though, or this might just be a nap that I go and hold him. But basically on these days, what I like to do is similar to how on a work day, I'm using my full focus planner on these mom days when it's just me and Ethan, when I, when I have both of them solo, it's very different because I'm planning stuff. There's all stuff I'm going to expect to get done. Um, but on a day like today, I use my notes app, which is like, I use my notes app all the time. Y'all feel like I'm always in there, but I literally make a new note that's like mama and Ethan day. And then I make a list of all the things I'm wanting to get done today. And that includes things like doing particular things with Ethan. And it includes things like folding laundry or something for work. And then I'm, so I kind of brain dump the whole list and then I categorize it into like, this is something I could do while I'm holding him for a nap. If you know, I'm having to extend that, right, which I'm about to have to do in a few minutes. Uh, and then I'll be like, okay, this is something I could do while we are both awake together, like while he's awake. So that might be something like folding laundry or unloading the dishes, which I will just like do with him doing some independent play or like having him, you know, kind of playing peekaboo with him while I fold laundry and sitting on the floor with him, those sorts of things, which lately he's not been wanting to be put down as much. So that could feel a little tougher, but I'll try on those things. And then I make a list of stuff that I want to do when he is sleeping independently in the crib for a nap, which is something like recording this podcast. So I do all that, categorize it. And then I have some stuff I don't really even put into a category, but to kind of tell you a few things, I mean, I have a few loads of laundry to fold uh, because we did not do any laundry yesterday. And then on Wednesday, I ran some laundry, but didn't fold it. And usually our nanny will actually help with folding laundry, but I forgot to give her any on Wednesday. So she only helped with laundry on Monday. So I have a lot of laundry to do, both running loads and then folding some. And then recording stuff for this particular episode, which has taken a lot of time this week, but I hope ends up being a really enjoyable episode that, the episode that you guys will like, but I need to record it. And then I need to record the intro for the episode, which I actually will be recording last. I'd like to do my intros last on episodes like this and then getting all of it to my podcast editor. And then I have to message my podcast team about some stuff for next week's episode. And then one thing I have that is to do during nap time while Ethan is in the crib is to look at Airbnb. So we are going to visit my grandparents in Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm really excited about it. They are two of my favorite people and they have not met Ethan yet and they won't be at our family Thanksgiving this year. So I'm excited to make that trip happen, but I got to look into Airbnbs for it. And y'all, I'm watching Ethan on the monitor and he just rolled to, from his back to his tummy. So he's very awake. Or I'm just going to keep recording this thing and then go figure out what's next there in a moment. But that's something figure, picking out. He's happy in the crib. I would not be like letting him cry right now in there. Okay. And then another thing is I need to order groceries on Instacart. If you want a deal on Instacart, you can go to a with McCravey.com slash Instacart. And there's a little, I think like 10 or $20 off your first order there, but that's how I do grocery shopping. Unless I'm going somewhere like Trader Joe's and I go in person, but this is a great example though of something like, so groceries is under do while I'm holding Ethan for a nap. Cause that's something I can really easily do for my phone while I'm holding him. The light from the phone is not bothersome. So that's probably something I'll do there. And then an outing I'm wanting to do today actually is going to the mall to walk Ethan in the stroller for one of his naps. So he does really really great in naps in the stroller with movement. And it's really hot right now because it's the beginning of August in Tennessee. So walking outside is not really an option. I would definitely prefer walking just in our neighborhood if the weather was nice because it's a lot easier and I like walking outside, but malls y'all, it's a great place to go walk. So if you live in an area where you're like, you don't want to you know, take your baby to the gym track to walk, or you don't have a gym or you know, which we don't have a gym that has that. And you also can't walk outside, go to the mall. And most malls actually open even earlier than 10 a.m. to walkers. So if you wanted to go walk at like 8 a.m. for your baby's first nap, you could probably do it. But what I like to do with Ethan when we go walk at the mall is it's normally on Fridays, right? Which is a crazy day for malls. But I, and so it's really crowded. Like the malls here are very popular and large, but I will walk in a department store and just kind of go up and down the aisles 
listening to a podcast or an audiobook, and I wear like workout shoes so I can be comfortable walking a long time. And then I sometimes will also like go out into the rest of the mall and often will like literally shop to some. Um, so if there's something I'm like wanting to go look at, I will do that and do a little window shopping. But anyway, it's, it's really fun. I enjoy it. Ethan gets a really good nap in and I'm getting like both knocking out like exercising and him having a good nap that maybe would not have happened if he had just been you know, in the crib, and then I'm having to just hold him in the dark nursery, like I'd much rather walk than do that. So yeah, that's something I will probably do today for his second nap, or maybe third, because it might be a four nap day now at this point. And then Adam took Colin to school this morning. And a lot of times on Fridays for us, Adam actually has early counseling sessions. And so in that case, I take Colin to school and Adam's gone by like 6.30 a.m. But today, it was it's, he does that like every other week. So today he um, did not have that early session. But then he will work a tad later, not like actually late, but he'll be home at more like 5.45. So I'll be picking up Colin from school and, you know, bringing Ethan with me and trying to time Ethan's last nap for that to make sense. So that's something I'll have to think about today as we get further into the day of like, okay, let's figure out like making sure Ethan's awake at the time that I need to go pick up Colin from school. So that's kind of what today's holds. I'm going to be playing with Ethan. Some things I want to do with him during awake time is like working on rolling because he's really, he's loving rolling. He's rolling from back to tummy one way, but not the other way. And then he hasn't gotten rolling from tummy to back yet. So kind of just doing some like play on the floor to kind of work on that. I also in these days with just me and Ethan try to read him a lot of books because I feel like we don't do a great job of reading books to him on days where it's all of us as a family. And I know that that's really good for his development, even though it can feel sometimes like, wait, is he really enjoying this? Is he really getting anything out of it? I try to do it anyway. Um, so I'm going to, I literally pulled out some books this morning that I'm planning to read him. And then, like I said, doing laundry, I've got to unload the dishwasher. Um, I might straighten like a hall closet. If I feel like I have time. I probably won't though. And then I do think I'll do a few work things during nap times today, maybe, but gosh, I mean, who knows? It feels like it feels it feels hard to do if I'm being honest. Um, and just to kind of update you on work hours this week, at the time that I'm recording this right now, I've done 15 hours and 17 minutes of clocked work this week. And so realistically, I'll probably end the week at about 16 hours, um, maybe 16 and a half or so, depending on how much work gets done today. And of course, like I said, I do some things for my phone, right? But a lot of times that just doesn't feel like the same kind of like work that ends up getting clocked here or or that should get clocked here, I should say. So that's probably where I'm going to end up ending the week. But I'll check back in at the end of the day today and let you know how Friday went, how me and Ethan's solo day went. Hello, hello. So I'm recording this on Saturday morning at almost 10 a.m. to wrap up our week behind the scenes. I found that it ended up being easier for me most days to end up doing this just the next morning. So let me tell you a little bit about yesterday, though. So yesterday, you know, I was recording this. Ethan woke up at 17 minutes. I recorded a little longer and tried to let him put himself back to sleep. And then I went in there and tried to like help him keep sleeping, tried to extend the sleep or rescue the nap or different, you know, terms we use. But I tried doing that did not work. And, um, then when I turned on the light, he was just smiling up at me as happy as a clam seeming to say like, mama, I just want to play. I don't want to sleep. So anyway, we got up y'all. He's just the sweetest, smiliest baby. Even when he's having a fussy day, which was yesterday. So yesterday overall, he was just on the struggle bus, like really fussy, honestly, and really only wanting to be held, which I know many of you guys have experienced days like this, or maybe you have a baby that's like this all the time. It's really hard as a mom, because it's both concerning for your baby because you're like, what's going on? I was definitely Googling stuff. I thought about calling the pediatrician again, but we already took him in once this week. Um, but it's concerning for your baby, but also like taking care of a fussy baby all day who you want to help, but can't seem to figure out how to help. is just really, really taxing and not having that like nap time break. And I know I would have felt that all the more if I had been taking care of both of them yesterday. So it definitely felt easier when it was just him and Colin was at school. But we, yeah, we had that really short nap, his next nap. I was like, all right, he's got to be really tired. He's got to make it longer. He woke up at 29 minutes on that nap. And then I went into his room, held him over an hour and a half to get the nap to be like about an hour and 45 minutes. And that definitely helped him be in a better mood. And while I was holding him, I did some things on my phone. Like I was saying, I was kind of like planning to do. So I posted a reel on Instagram I need to do, posted a few other things. And then I also ordered groceries. But generally speaking, I also just like read some articles on my phone. So I wasn't like 
I read some various news articles and things. I got sucked into like a story, like a random story, and then just kept reading. So anyway, that was kind of what I did while holding him. And then for his third nap, we did go to the mall to walk. And that was a really good experience because y'all, it is so hot here. So it just feels good to be able to go on a nice walk, but be indoors. And um, like I said earlier, I just really love mall walks. If you haven't tried it, try it. Another pro of mall walks is you can get Starbucks while you're there. So like ordered Starbucks for my phone, was able to go pick it up at the Starbucks in the mall and then just keep on walking. Uh, he actually fell asleep on the drive to the mall. So that worked out really well. And then we were just able to get going um, and get walking. And obviously that's something that only works really well when you have only have one child with you. If I'd had Colin with me yesterday, a mall walk would have looked a whole lot different than the really chill kind of me getting to exercise and drink a coffee and listen to an audiobook, which is why I did. It would have looked a lot different. So that's like something I try to do on a day when it's just me and Ethan because I'm like, I can do this in this fun, relaxing way for me. So I, well, the whole time I was walking, listened to an audiobook I'm loving. I'm so close to finishing. So I feel like I can truly recommend it at this point, but it's called The Good Part by Sophie Cousins. And y'all, it is just the ultimate must read. I truly feel like it's a book that like hits every category of things you could look for in a book. I've been switching between the audio and the Kindle version of it. I'm definitely going to end up finishing it mainly as an audio book because I've spent so much time like walking and listening to it, but so good. I don't even, I guess just like fiction is what it would fall into, but it's funny. It has romance. I mean, so many different things going on. It has uh, sweet moments about parenthood, but it definitely makes you appreciate the beautiful and hard part about being a parent and um, growing older and thing and things like that. I mean, basically, the the short synopsis is she's. 26 and single, um, the main character, Lucy, and she wishes to skip to the good part of her life. And then everything changes. And, and, you know, there's, there's so much like there's grief in it, sad moments, beautiful moments. I mean, literally all yesterday, I'm over here walking around Belk and was crying. I mean, I, I, I kept my tears, <laughs> kept my tears reeled in, but I mean, the book is just so like beautiful and emotional, but also funny, like again, can't recommend it enough. So I'll link to that in the show notes, but seriously, such a good one. And I'm like 85% done with it. So I'm excited to finish it, but I'm also like, this is the kind of book that I feel like I would want to like maybe reread next year. And maybe that to my reread it, read the whole thing just read instead of as an audiobook. Anyway, really love it though. That was a really fun part of my day. Other things I did, I did do two loads of laundry and folded them. Woohoo! <laughs> I did the dishes, like got all those unloaded, reloaded. Um, I Ethan and I went and got gas in the car on the way to go to the mall. That we did that mall walk. I messaged my team some on Slack. That was definitely like some audio messages being sent about some podcast related things. And it's a lot of communication there that all would have been better if I had just been able to do it at my computer, but that was not how the day was going. I posted a reel, like I said, while I was holding Ethan for a nap, but with how naps were all basically assisted yesterday, there wasn't much time for anything without Ethan with me, which can feel hard sometimes, right? But it's okay. Hard isn't the same as bad. And I feel like parenting is so just full of everyday like sacrifices and hard moments like this. Like it's not one thing, it's another, but it's all beautiful and wonderful. And I like love it even when it feels feels hard. And I'm sure you guys can relate, but like for his second nap, for example, after he had that 17 minute nap and I was like, this next one's going to be great. He woke up, like I said, at like the 30 minute mark or something, but I had been sitting down doing a devotional and prayer time for like maybe seven minutes. I did some things before, after putting him down, you know, like straightened a little, went to the bathroom and then I'm like doing the Stevo time, seven minutes, he wakes up. And that just kind of felt like what yesterday was like in general. And Ethan didn't get happier when I baby wore him for a while and just kind of walked around the house and did some things like that. But, you know, I had this vision of like reading him lots of books and things like that, which we did a little bit of, but he really just wasn't in the mood for anything like that. So anyway, Ethan and I went and got Colin from preschool at around four and then Adam got home around 545. And we had a nice family evening and a nice dinner together. And now it's Saturday. Like I said, it's like 10 o'clock. And I'm working right now mainly to record this and do something else for my podcast. Again, I feel like there's just been so much things with the podcast this week. And a lot of that has to do with my podcast editor going out of town and then switching up some episode things. And it's also a long weekend in Canada, which is where my podcast manager lives. So like kind of doing some more last minute things because of that. So right now, though, including recording this and recording something else for my podcast, I've logged about an hour of work on a Saturday morning, which is not typical for me, I will say. Adam and I usually both, except for he sometimes has counseling sessions on Saturday, he'll have like one or two. But generally speaking, we typically 
try not to work much on the weekends. But with how yesterday went and how like I'm preparing to not have much work time next week, it's like, yeah, this needed to happen. I have team members I have to get things to. So I've vlogged about an hour right now. I might end up logging probably another hour of work over the weekend. And then things going on just the weekend in general, I'm not going to go day by day through the whole weekend, but some things going on. I'm going to a tea time today with my book club, which is really fun at a place in Nashville called Thistle Farms. If you're ever here visiting, I highly recommend Thistle, Fa- Th- Thistle Farms, tongue twister. It's in a part of Nashville I don't really go to much. It's pretty far from where I live, like 30 minutes-ish away. But it's such a fun experience. Their food's awesome, but you can do like a high tea there. And we've done this one other time with my book club, and I've gone other times with just friends um, to do a tea time. But it's just really fun. It's a fun, like really fun, like finger foods. You get a bunch of different teas. So we are doing that for our book club this month, which ironically the book I'm almost done with that I said was so amazing is actually not our book club book. I actually did read our book club book, which I feel so bad about. I should not get to it this month. So anyway, we're doing that though. And I think that'll be really fun. And Adam will be solo with the kids while I do that. And then we are going to church tomorrow. Adam might go golf with a friend tomorrow as well. I'm like, why do y'all want to do that? It's so hot, but he wants to do that. So, you know, I'm doing the fun thing with friends today and he might do that um, tomorrow. They have to see if they can get a tea time. And then we will definitely go out to dinner one night for sure, probably on Sunday night, I would imagine. And yeah, just a pretty chill weekend with family. We often on Saturday mornings go out to breakfast, but we didn't do that this morning because of me having this tea time later. And then also meaning to record this podcast and us wanting to Ethan to just be able to get a really solid crib nap, hopefully. So yeah, that's been the week though. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and that it was interesting, helpful in some ways. Um, I've been recording this in little stints versus one giant audio track. So I'm like, so curious how long this is going to be. I feel like it's going to be quite a long episode. So anyway, Thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end. And again, I hope you got something out of this and that it was enjoyable to you in some way and will help you in your life and business. So anyway, that's it. Thank you for being a listener. And I'll be back next week with a podcast interview, actually. So that'll be really fun. All right. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to the podcast, friend. I appreciate you being here. That just flew by, didn't it? Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, I really want to encourage you to check out my website where you will find tons of resources to help you grow a profitable and sustainable business. Over on ElizabethMcCravey.com, you'll find things like free workbooks, guides, quizzes, lock screens, and checklists to encourage you in your business, help you grow, and give you practical solutions to many business problems. You'll also find my top business tools. Like, yes, I literally list out all the major ones for you on my website. And I even have a lot of special discounts and offers for you guys to snag as you try these products, services, and softwares. If you want to take the podcast content and make it super actionable, my resource page is here to help. So go to elizabethmccravey.com slash tools to access everything. I hope you have fun exploring all of it over there. And if you loved this episode, leave a rating review for the show wherever you're listening or share with a friend. That's a great way to support the podcast. And I appreciate it so much. Thanks again so much for listening. I'll be back next week with a new episode. Bye for now.